grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and uh, Jennifer told me that as a small girl, one of the traditions that she had with her family uh, was on Memorial Day to go down to Faribault, Minnesota, and to place flowers on the graveyards of their grandparents. And then after they did that, they would have a picnic at a nearby park. You may have a similar tradition for Memorial Day, or you know, maybe it's a time where you focus more on our fallen warriors who have died serving our country. Or maybe for some, it's just a day off from work that you can enjoy doing yard work or out in God's beautiful creation. The people in Manchester, England, also have their version of Memorial Day, although they call it Remembrance Day, and it's on November 11th. Um, they commemorate the fallen warriors, um, soldiers of their war. Um, but I'm sure that right now they're probably consumed more about what happened on May 22nd. As you are probably all familiar, 22 people were killed and over 100 injured as the result of a terrorist attack at a concert in Manchester. It may be a bit surprising, but by one account, there have been 608 terrorist incidences in the world in 2017 alone. Can you believe that? 2017 alone, we're just getting started, 608 incidences of terrorists. It's a crazy time we live in, and we need to be on our guard. Well, in our reading this morning, Peter warns the church about enemies. And he warns about these enemies as prowling around, ready to devour but he isn't talking about suicide bombers. Rather, he's speaking about spiritual enemies. He said, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And we today are in that same battle. We are in that same boat um, as Satan prowls around our world today looking for someone to devour. This is actually a, a fairly well-known verse, but it's part of a larger discussion that Peter is having on the topic of suffering. So I'd like to expand this topic uh, and look at suffering as Peter describes it in our reading today. Um, he introduces it uh, in verse 12. He says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you. And so he's speaking about this fiery trial uh, that's going to give suffering uh, to you. Um, and as we go through this text, we're going to find out that there really are different kinds of suffering uh, and that there is no uh, getting away from suffering. It is something that we will all experience in one way or another. In fact, I really like how one commentator put it. He put it this way. You have a choice of whether to suffer at the hands of the world or suffer at the hands of God. Wow, what does that mean? Well, it means that either we suffer for doing good or we suffer for doing bad. Now, that still may not help. Let's, let's look at it a little further. Uh, Peter addresses the suffering for doing bad in verse 15. He says, um, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. So basically, if we suffer for doing bad, there are going to be consequences from it. The consequences may come from the government, um, but the government has its authority from God, so we could say that when we do bad, in, in, in a sense then, uh, we are suffering at the hands of God, at the hands of his judgment. However, if you do good, you will still suffer. Um, in this case, it is from persecution from the world. Um, verse 16 tells us, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, 
but let him glorify God in that name. And so in this example, we have um, uh, suffering at the hands of the world uh, as a result of doing good. Now, there are also an indication that we can get combinations of this too. There's some indication that suffering comes from God even when we don't do bad. Um, in verse 12, going back to the verse we just looked at, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. And so there's some indication here that um, we can be tested, that God might come down, just to be very similar to Job, that even when we don't do something wrong, um, there might be chances where God will come and allow Satan some freedom to come after us and to test us. And so uh, the bottom line is, is suffering is inevitable. The point of Peter is to choose the right kind of suffering. Suffering for Christ is short-lived and the blessings are eternal. We also know that suffering for unbeliever is eternal. Challenging words this morning on suffering, but there is good news in our text this morning. And that good news is that God will help us. And he helps us when we humble ourselves and depend upon him. Verse 6 tells us that. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. That is our good news. He has uh, actually uh, several points of good news for us that I would like to share with us. And, and, and really, part of the way he helps us is by sending us his Holy Spirit. You know, we all have the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit's given to us in our baptism. The Holy Spirit lives within us. But this passage today suggests that for those who are persecuted, they might actually get an extra portion of the Holy Spirit. And it is this extra manifestation of the Holy Spirit that gives the courage and the strength to withstand the onslaught of persecution. And this is suggested in verse 14. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, he says you are actually blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The spirit rests upon you. That's language that we've heard elsewhere. It's at Pentecost where we, we hear the Holy Spirit resting upon the apostles in, in the forms of tongues of fire. And at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit came to rest upon Jesus as a dove. And so these are times when the Holy Spirit came in a very unique and special way to rest upon his believers. And so what this passage in Peter is telling us is that just as the Spirit was present uh, in a very special way uh, in these cases, he will also be present with suffering Christians and be present with them in a very real and powerful way. And I think we can all think of an example of this. You remember Stephen? Remember Stephen in the book of Acts? He was the first martyr in Christendom. Uh, he gave his testimony, and he was actually stoned in the very presence of Saul, who eventually became Paul. And while he was being stoned, he looked up to heaven, and he said, Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And those who witnessed said his face was like an angel's. And so we, we worry a lot as we see terrorists going around the world and we wonder what would happen if we ever have to face this, to, to deny Christ or to, to have faith and show and trust in him to the point of death. And, and our good news is this morning that in these times of crisis, um, we will have an overwhelming sense of peace, that God will send his Holy Spirit to 
upon us. You know, Jennifer and I have experienced uh, peace in the midst of very trying circumstances. Jennifer, with her uh, walk with cancer and with my heart attack, I can remember a peace that was real and tangible and you could feel it. And I have talked to others who are in their cancer walks or their illnesses have told me the same, that they have felt a peace and they knew that people were praying for them. And this is trouble that does not result from persecution. This is trouble that we struggle with just from living in a broken world. And yet we have that peace. How much more will that be true in the case of persecution? If you suffer because of persecution, the Holy Spirit will be there to help you to guide you, and to strengthen you. Yes, it's hard to think of suffering as a good thing, but suffering for Christ is a blessing. So our first good news this morning is he gives us the Holy Spirit in our persecution and our suffering. A second piece of good news this morning is that God helps us through camaraderie with our fellow believers. He said, uh, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, which we read, seeking someone to devour. It says, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. How do veterans survive the war? through teamwork and camaraderie. When they go to boot camp, it's a very concerted effort to develop a sense of teamwork and camaraderie uh, to be able to help each other and, and to fight these wars. And that is an image of how we are to fight our spiritual battle. To be aware that your fellow brothers and sisters are fighting the same battle. In fact, I suggest turn and look at the person next to you. Take a look at them and realize that they are fighting the same battle that you are fighting. So stick together. Cover each other's back. Defend each other. Are we good at doing that as a church? Yeah, I think so. But I think there are some other times where we stab each each other in the back, right? How many times have we met people who have walked away from the church because of something that has happened at the church? And so, yes, there are times that we fail at this too. But have you ever run into examples where there have been squabblers, people squalling over something small, but they they end up having a common enemy, and so they end up banding together in order to face off against this greater enemy? And I think that also is an image for us in the church, that yes, maybe sometimes we have our differences, sometimes we squabble with each other, but we have a greater enemy. That person sitting next to you is not your enemy. It is Satan who is prowling around. And so we need to work together so that we can resist that enemy and so that we can get through our sufferings together. Peter gives us a third reason for hope today in our suffering. And that is is it helps when you realize that we suffer for a purpose. That suffering has its benefits. It has its benefits in this world and also in the next. And the benefit in this world is is that it humbles us. And that is actually a good thing. Because when we are humbled, we rely upon God rather than relying upon ourselves. Ourselves. 
the long-term benefit of our suffering is that we will rejoice with God in heaven. And that was shared in verse 13. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. It says we share in Christ's sufferings. It's implying that we don't share a, a suffer with Christ or we don't suffer along Christ, but rather we participate in his sufferings. And, and that's a distinction. It's, it's hard to put flesh on to understand, but it, it seems to suggest that in this suffering, it connects us with Christ in a very unique and powerful way to the point that we will literally share in Christ's glory when he returns. And rejoice we will. In fact, the word rejoice is actually used twice here, but in the Greek it uses two separate words. Uh, the second Greek word seems to intensify the meaning of the word rejoice. And so it's as if it is saying, uh, believers rejoice now in suffering, but when Christ comes, the rejoicing will be, uh, be beyond all earthly joy. However, you remember those who have passed on this weekend. Whether it be your family members or whether it be the servicemen and women, remember that we all have an enemy that is prowling around trying to bring us to eternal death. Band together. As a church, and fight the enemy. If my memory serves me correct, and uh, my memory is generally pretty good, but it's getting shorter as I get older. But if I remember right, uh, when our son John, when he graduated from boot camp, uh, he was in the, um, the National Guard Army. Uh, we went down to um, Oklahoma for his uh, graduation from his boot camp. And I remember when we were down there, there was a saying that they would say to each other. Uh, it was almost a, like a rallying cry, something to help build the camaraderie uh, amongst uh, the brothers in the army. And if I remember right, it went something like this. It was, hua. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Well, I think we should face each other, give each other a high five and say, hua. Okay, let's do that now. High five, hua. <laughs> Let us remember that he is out there prowling. And when we suffer, and, and we will suffer at times, trust in God, for he helps us as we rejoice in his blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.